Now let's talk about transforms in Photoshop. And transforms are located in two different places. You have under your edit menu here, transformations, you have free transform and transform. And then puppet warp, which is also kind of a transform, and we'll get into that in a little bit. And right away under here, we have our scale, rotate, skew, distort, perspective, warp. And those are your main ways of transforming objects or pixels that are on your layer. You can also rotate them. And then you can also flip horizontal. What you could also do is just use Control or Command T. And that brings you into the free transform mode. And it creates a bounding box around your object or your pixels that are on that layer. So in your bounding box mode, you can move. You can scale, and you could rotate. Now what you could also do is switch between different um, transformations. So you have your scale, rotate, skew, distort. So you could switch to your skew, or switch to your perspective, or your warp. And it's all done from the right click. You can also rotate 180 degrees, or you could flip your horizontal, all from within the free transform function. Now, in your options bar, let's do Command T again, or Control T. We have our reference point location, which if you click on the top left, you'll see that all of your transformations are going towards your top left. Your scale, your rotation, and then you can move it to the bottom right, and again, your rotation and your scale is constrained to the bottom right part of your bounding box. You also have numbers you could type in, which give you an absolute position. And then you have your width and your height, which you can scale individually, numerically. You could do like 50, or in here you could do 25, or link them together and scale that way. You can also rotate precisely and just put in some degrees, like 45. And then you have your skew. Which also, you can mouse over each one of the little text objects, and you can sort of slide it with your mouse and set it back. And so the option bar is just another way to precisely control um, your transforms. Now I'm going to quickly create sort of a fake drop shadow um, with this guy using the transform tools. And what I'm going to do is just duplicate this layer. I'm going to clear my layer style. And I'm going to lock my transparent pixels. And I'm just going to fill it with a color. Unlock it. And then I'm just going to bring this underneath. Now, using my transform tools, bring up my free transform. I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to skew. And go back to scale again. And then use some perspective. And then I'm just going to put a simple blur. And 
and then I'm going to mask out um, the dude above. Invert. Kind of adjust this. Now this is just a quick way to use the transforms and sort of create a faux shadow. Faux show. And so there you go. Just using the transform tools, I mean it's not realistic and 100% perfect, but it's just a way to use the transforms tools to give you something uh, just kind of quick and dirty. So ex this example, I'm going to use the transform tools to sort of fix his right arm, um, which looks a little broken and janky. So I'm just going to use the transform tools and flip horizontally and then shift it over. I drew a guide down the middle so we can um, snap it together perfectly and go from there. And now I'm adjusting his head to make sure the head is centered between his shoulders now. I just made a selection to clear some of the background there. And then go ahead, select the head, and I'm using the adjustment tools, or the transform tools, to kind of shift it into place and then switch to warp and kind of blend the lines together so they uh, join up right. And evaluating the arm a little bit. Now it looks a little too perfect, but we'll fix that later. And again, back to the head and using the warp tool to blend my lines. And it's probably good enough at that point. So looking at the arm again, and it's too perfect, I'm taking a brush and I'm just going to quickly remove some of the stuff that is uh, totally symmetrical because my drawing wasn't completely symmetrical I want to keep some of that detail. And flipping back and forth you can sort of see that the arm is now equal with some last minute clone cleanup and we're pretty much just about done with this one here. Now I went ahead and cleaned up this image a bit um, because I wanted to use it for an example of the transforms and also as the puppet warp. Now the puppet warp can work either on all the pixels that are on your layer or the object that is on your layer or a selection. So in this case I'm just going to use a selection and I'm going to select his arm here and let me zoom in on his arm not that much zoom out and take a look here Use my lasso, select around his arm. Now I'm not being super precise here, I'm just showing an example. And then we can go ahead and do Edit, Puppet Warp. Now right away you see this mesh that shows up and in your options bar has options for the Puppet Warp. You have Show Mesh, You have your expansion, which controls how far the mesh draws out from your selection. And then your density, which you can have fewer points, more points and as you can see your mesh gets denser so obviously that's going to be a performance hit right there but it'll probably be more accurate and normal. So I think I had this at negative two. And then our mode which is rigid, normal, and distort. So rigid is basically going to keep your pixels in a more rigid manner and not really have as much flexibility as far as um, elasticity but distort you can use for some really high um, elastic um, attributes. Now you could go ahead and click and put a pin down like that and a pin is a location of where you're going to have a warp or for your puppet. Now this can also work sort of like an IK bone method. If you're not familiar with that it's basically going to interpolate 
pixels between the two points. And you can sort of create a puppet that way. Now, you can use Alt, and you could click on over it, but don't click on it, because if you click on your point, you get the little scissors, and you could remove it. But it brings up this little arc, Circle Delio, where you can rotate from here. Now in your options, here is the degrees and your angle that you're rotating. So here, if we want to rotate, you can see it's rotating the pixels around that axis, and it's also interpolating the pixels between the next point. So in this particular case, let's remove this point and click on this one, and then rotate it. And you'll see that it responds a little more normal. Now if we continue to make a point down here and click, we could also drag this one and sort of move it around. And it acts a little bit um, as expected. And so from here, we can kind of add a little bit of um, variance in this other arm so it's not so perfect. But then what's also happening here, as you can see, we've detached um, There's our mesh, and we've kind of created this line because we're altering the pixels on this layer, and we'd have to go in and touch that up. So, again, your points, you can rotate on them. Holding down Alt, you can rotate them, or cut out your point, and rotate from there, or drag and move them. But that's pretty much the, the Puppet Warp, and pretty powerful, and it's pretty cool that they've added this in CS5, and so this is just an example of how you can use that. And we've covered the transformation tools. Under Edit, you have Puppet Warp, Free Transform, and Transforms. And then we've also right-click you can do free transform, transform selection, control T brings up your transforms as well, and then the puppet warp. And that pretty much covers all the transforms.